Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Susie with Gemini Connect and in today's video we are talking about the best vlogging cameras for 2019 and beyond. With the rise of vlogging in YouTube, one of the top questions that keeps getting asked over and over again is, what's the best vlogging camera to use? And that's a great question because the answer really depends on what year it is and what kind of technology is out there. So today we're going to talk about some of the newer vlogging cameras that have come out that you might want to consider using. If you're new here, my name is Susie and I am one half of Gemini Connect. Gemini Connect is uh, a partnership between myself and my husband. Our YouTube channel covers gear, tech, and all the behind the scenes shots as we journey into filmmaking. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Now with that out of the way, let's get started with vlogging cameras. So before we talk about vlogging cameras of today, we have to talk about vlogging cameras of yesterday. So this right here is your most classic vlogging camera rig. It consists of a Joby Gorillapod, a DSLR camera, a 24mm lens or wider, and a Rode video mic. Now this is a pretty big rig, but there are plenty of vloggers out there who use this as their primary vlogging rig, and it's known to produce really crisp, really professional, almost cinematic looking vlogging pieces. Now this right here is a rather new vlogging setup that's come about as a result of mirrorless cameras. So this here is the Sony a6300 mirrorless camera. I have the 16 to 50 power zoom kit lens on top and as well as the Rode Video Micro. Now these two are your most classic vlogging camera setups, but they have some weaknesses. Number one, size. I don't know about you, but this is really, really heavy for me. So holding this and trying to film myself, I can only do it for so long. And because my camera doesn't have in-body stabilization and my lens hopefully does, but in this case it actually doesn't, it is really, really hard to keep this steady. Not only that, but this is a couple thousand dollars worth of camera gear that I'm holding in one hand. So it doesn't take much for someone to come by and grab it or knock it out of my hand and I'm out of a camera. Now this camera, of course, is a little bit older, so there's no 4K on it. Even the new 6D Mark II, I understand, does not have 4K, so we're shooting in 1080. I'm um, not really sure about autofocus, so I'm hoping that I'm focused on, but there's a good chance I'm not. Uh, but I am using a Rode VideoMic Pro, so the audio should be pretty good. Let's take a step outside, and we will see how the sound changes when we introduce some background noise. So this is vlogging outdoors with the Canon 6D. In comparison, this is a much smaller vlogging rig and it's probably the one that I recommend using if you really want to use a mirrorless camera. It's small, compact, and doesn't really scream, I'm a vlogger, at least not in comparison to this guy. All right, so I'm doing a little test of the a6300. I'll have to be honest, this is an older camera, so it actually does not have IBIS or in-body uh, stabilization in the camera, but the lens is stabilized. So hopefully this is a fairly stable video. All right, I was initially going to do more of a street vlogging test, but it's raining pretty hard. So we have some traffic outside and there's a lot of rain falling. And hopefully though, with this directional mic and the wind and the windscreen, my sound is still sounding pretty good. All right, without the directional mic, there should be a lot more ambient noise. But now we're gonna talk about three other options that you may not have even considered as vlogging cameras. So in three, two, one, Ooh, look at this. This is so much smaller and more practical when it comes to vlogging, if I may say so myself. Here we have three vlogging cameras, and some of them may be familiar and others not so much. First of all, we have the GoPro Hero 7 Black. Now this camera came out in September 2018, and I was actually very skeptical at first because prior to this GoPro, I had this GoPro. This is the GoPro Hero 2, and if you really want to get a laugh out of a camera salesperson, just bring this camera in when you're buying the Hero 7, and they'll laugh when they see this. Because we used it maybe twice, and the video and photo quality out of this camera, even back when it first came out, was pretty atrocious. So ever since then, we've been kind of burned by GoPros, and we just haven't even considered buying another one. That is until the Hero 7 Black came out. And what really sold us on it was the fact that it shoots in HyperSmooth. And so HyperSmooth is GoPro's newest form of stabilization. And in our opinion, HyperSmooth is so good on the GoPro that you no longer even need to think about getting the Karma Grip, which is GoPro's gimbal that they also sell. But we'll talk about gimbals in a second. Now just for grins, I've decided to turn the GoPro's HyperSmooth in-body stabilization off. And so now we're walking with just raw GoPro footage 
everything is just straight out of camera. There is no stabilization turned on and hyper smooth is on. So we should be seeing some pretty smooth footage despite the fact that, I mean, I could see my hand shaking. I know that this isn't the smoothest in terms of how it's looking. We have the Samsung Galaxy S8. And this is more encompassing to say that pretty much any modern day smartphone is a pretty decent vlogging camera. Now on my S8, I actually have the Moment Superfish wide angle lens on it. So I've done a whole nother video on Moment lenses and why I think you should really add them to your camera kit. But in short, this little lens here is so fantastic. Well, it's not the late afternoon, but it's winter. So four o'clock is late afternoon. Took lots of photos and videos. Yeah, ate lots of seafood and drank lots of coffee. So this particular combination of the Samsung Galaxy S8 or iPhone or whatever modern day smartphone you're using, plus a moment lens is really a viable choice as a vlogging camera. Now this right here in the center is the camera that you're probably least familiar with. This is the Osmo Pocket and it just came out in December 2018. So this camera is made by DJI and they are most famous for making drones. This right here is the original Mavic Pro, and up front you can actually see that it comes with a camera. And basically what DJI has done is just taken this camera and the gimbal and made it pocket sized. So if you're familiar with shooting with the Mavic Pro, the quality that you get out of this drone is pretty similar to what you're gonna get in the Osmo Pocket. I would have done it with the Osmo, but Osmo hasn't released their mount, or at least I don't have one yet. Yeah. Um, so how did the cafe cam come about? So we started out here just as a roaster because it was cheaper. Um, okay. So now that we've explained what each of these cameras are in front of me, let's talk about how they apply exactly for vlogging. The GoPro Hero 7, as I mentioned before, comes with HyperSmooth. So HyperSmooth has really removed the reason to use a gimbal with this. And this is the part where I'm going to talk about gimbals for a little bit. This here is a gimbal. And what a gimbal does is when it's activated, it will automatically stabilize your camera so that when you're moving it around, your camera stays relatively stable. And so again, this is important unless you want the Blair Witch effect in your videos. So this camera is revolutionary because you've got a little gimbal on your camera because if you didn't have this, you would probably need something like either of these. These two are also gimbals. This is the Zhiyun Smooth Q and it's made for smartphones. And this is the Zhiyun Crane V2. So this one is made for DSLRs, big mirrorless cameras, you name it. So looking at these two gimbals and their size, you can see why it is so revolutionary to have something like the Osmo Pocket. Like this too is also a gimbal. So which one would you rather have with you for vlogging? And the phone actually has a degree of image stabilization. Of the three cameras here, it's probably the worst, but it has stabilization. But if you wanna get the best stabilization out of the phone, you really, really wanna use an actual gimbal. The only downside to using the gimbal is that you can't use the Moment lens on top of it because everything about this is about weight and trying to balance the weight. And this lens is just heavy enough that it really does matter. And you're just not gonna be able to fully balance your phone on it. In comparison with the lens off, this is what a gimbal does. So now that the phone is stabilized, I can be walking, I can even vlog if I can remember what the command is to turn this around. But yeah, this gimbal will make your smartphone footage so smooth. So if you're planning to shoot with a phone, I can't recommend a gimbal enough, specifically the Smooth Q. Let's talk a little bit about image quality. So although all three of these cameras can shoot 4K video, it's not gonna quite be the best 4K video that you can get. I mean, there's a reason why they're not using these cameras to shoot Hollywood movies yet. Or are they? But in all seriousness, the image quality I think is pretty fantastic. We've been able to watch the footage that comes out of these cameras on our big screen TV and the quality is pretty darn good. Another thing to talk about is low light capabilities. The GoPro is probably the worst. When it comes to low lighting, you not only get really noisy, muddy colors, but you also lose image stabilization. So hyper smooth actually gets turned off. So your videos get really shaky. So if you don't have enough available light, this is not the best camera to use. The Osmo Pocket, on the other hand, has an F2 lens on it. So shooting in the dark is easier with the Osmo Pocket, but 
your footage is still going to be pretty noisy, your colors aren't going to be fantastic. So the Osmo Pocket in low lighting is going to be significantly better than the GoPro, but still not quite your best option. All right, testing the phone, the Samsung Galaxy S8 and the S9 have actually performed the best in low lighting. I think it's a combination of the phone just being able to handle it better and also using the moment lenses. So low light shooting right now goes to the phone. It's so much better than the old one. So let's move on and talk about sound for a bit. Now, all three of these cameras, like pretty much any other camera today, have some pretty good built-in sound quality. The GoPro has never been known for having good sound, and if you look at other reviews about GoPros, the sound is always one of the biggest complaints that people have about it. Um, but I'd say a lot of that has changed in recent models, especially the Hero 7 Black. This camera actually has four microphones spread throughout to the whole camera, and the sound quality is pretty fantastic, but oddly enough, it seems to pick up the best if you're standing directly behind it. So in terms of vlogging, it's maybe not gonna give you the best sound, but if you're standing behind it and talking, then your sound, then your voice actually gets picked up pretty well. We are in the Amazon Spheres. Uh, they've been open for, I think, a little over a year now. The other thing is too, it's, it's a constant temperature in here, so it's actually quite warm. I think the Osmo beats in instability, possibly in image quality too. Yeah. It definitely beats the GoPro in image quality. The Osmo Pocket has, I'm not sure where its microphone is, I think in the bottom. In terms of vlogging, the Osmo Pocket probably has the worst sound out of these three cameras. It's a brand new camera, so I'm not going to dig on DJI too much for that because this is the first generation and I'm pretty certain that this camera is going to just get better at time. But for now, the built-in microphones are not the best. And even though DJI did just release a firmware update that supposedly improved the sound, I don't hear much of a difference. Sound is still pretty muddy and it doesn't really matter if you're standing behind the camera or if you have it facing, facing towards you. The sound just doesn't sound as good as some of these other cameras. All right, so testing out the sound. Uh, the sound is notoriously not so great on the Osmo Pocket. We're indoors, so we don't have a whole lot of noise. But I'm going to step outside and we're going to see just how the sound changes. Alright, so stepping outside, um, we're going to see how the sound quality on the Osmo Pocket is. My theory is that if you're indoors, you don't have a whole lot of competing noise. The Osmo Pocket probably sounds just fine. But when you're outdoors and you have a whole lot of ambient noise, Osmo Pocket doesn't sound so great anymore. Here's a little table in the little treehouse in the greenhouse in um, the middle of the city. The other thing is too, it's, it's a constant temperature in here, so it's actually quite warm. You know, it's more awkward. You stick out more. Yeah. Now the Galaxy S8 has some pretty fantastic sound because after all this is a phone and so the whole point of this device is to pick up sounds. The built-in sound quality is actually pretty good and of these three I'd say that the phone actually has the best sound quality. Um, so like the scenic beaches, also just the wildlife, we've seen quite a few eagles in the area because yeah. it's actually a really great time of year to see eagles. When it comes to vlogging it's actually important to make that sound quality as best as you possibly can so there are some ways to enhance the built-in microphones of at least two of these cameras. For the phone, we have the Rode VideoMic Me. Now I suspect this is the exact same microphone that they're using here on the Rode Video Micro. The only difference really is the mount, and the mount actually does matter because you actually want the microphone to fit really well in your camera, otherwise you're going to get a lot of external noise of that microphone being banged around. Let's start with the Rode VideoMic Me. It's made for smartphones, and so all you do is you plug it into the audio port of your phone. And then you might have to fiddle with some settings within your camera. But once it's plugged in and you have your settings dialed in, you can just start talking. This is a directional microphone. Whatever direction it's pointing in, it's going to pick up sound closest to it. So if you're pointing it towards yourself, that's great for vlogging. You can also point it in the other direction if you're talking to someone else and you want to pick up on their sound instead. So uh, we picked up our van yesterday, got like a 30 minute orientation about just its history, how to more or less use it because it is an older van. I don't remember what year it's from. 1984, which is the same age as me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're driving an older vehicle, which is a little difficult for us because we have a three-year-old Subaru Impreza. 
Another way that you can enhance the sound input of your phone is to use a lavalier or lapel microphone. I actually have one right here, but I'm, I'm using it to record the sound for this video. If I were to use it for my phone, I would clip it to myself and then just plug it into that audio port. And now this microphone is even closer to me. So if I'm just trying to capture my audio and everything that I'm saying, then this microphone is gonna do exactly that. Moving on to the GoPro. Now, enhancing the sound of this guy is a little bit more challenging. So unlike the Samsung, the Osmo Pocket and the Hero 7 Black both do not have an audio input jack, which means you can't directly plug these microphones in. Instead, you have to get an adapter because they both have USB-C ports. So you have to get an adapter that, that plugs into a USB-C port and also gives you an audio input jack here. And unfortunately for GoPro, they've done something to make their adapter very specific to GoPros. So I've tried using other audio adapters and they just will not work with the GoPro. You have to buy their adapter. And the adapter is almost as big as the GoPro. So if you want to enhance the sound of the GoPro, you have to get this adapter. But let's take a look at what that's going to look like. The best way to vlog with a GoPro or to enhance the sound of the GoPro is going to be to get this cage here. The Rode Video Micro is actually about the right size because you can't use a microphone that's too big. Otherwise, it's actually going to get in the frame. So you put the Rode Video Micro in there and then you plug it in to the GoPro audio jack. So this is the end product. It looks really ridiculous, but it actually does make a pretty big difference with the sound. All right, without the directional mic, there should be a lot more ambient noise. My voice is probably going to be a lot less clear, but we'll see in the test. All right, so now I've added the GoPro adapter and also added the Rode Video Micro on top of the GoPro. And this is all attached through a metal cage. I'm going to step outside and just see how adding the directional mic has really changed the sound input of the GoPro. So again, now that we have that directional mic on top of the GoPro, our sound quality has probably changed quite a bit. But if you didn't want to use the Rode Video Micro, the directional mic, you can also take off this ridiculousness. And instead of plugging in your directional mic, you again can opt for a lav mic. So I have a lapel mic clipped right here to my jacket and I'm speaking directly into it as the lapel mic is attached to the GoPro via the GoPro adapter. Now the last of our cameras, the Osmo Pocket, because it's so new it currently does not have any way to enhance the audio. Um, again it does have that USB-C port at the bottom and I have tried to use the GoPro adapter, I've tried to use other USB-C adapters and I don't see a very big difference in sound but I might just need a little bit more testing. A final option for making sound better is just to stick with an audio recorder. This is a Tascam DR05. And if you were going to use this to record audio, you can either rely on these two microphones here, or you can plug in your lapel mic and clip it to yourself to get really clear audio. And so doing this would take a little bit more post-production because you then have to take the audio from this recorder and then match it to your video footage. But if you are really, really insistent on having good clear audio, which you should be as a vlogger, then you may want to look into this option as well. This wraps up our journey in Whidbey Island, right off of Seattle into the sea. I ate lots of seafood and drank lots of coffee. And of course, you don't even have to use an audio recorder. You could achieve the same thing with a smartphone and and a voice recording app. So another thing we should talk about is the focal length of all three of these cameras. So the GoPro, you probably know, comes with a ultra wide lens. And so that, some people criticize that actually, and they say, oh, that just gives it that GoPro look. But realistically, when you're vlogging, you kind of want that super wide, almost fisheye lens effect. Because when you're recording yourself, you can't see the back screen that shows you what you're filming. So you want an ultra wide lens because you can hold this camera out at almost any arm length and you know that you're going to be in the frame like you plus a lot of your background. Um, in addition to the built in super wide GoPro lens, GoPro also has a linear option so you can actually shoot at a slightly more zoomed in effect and that removes that wide angle fisheye effect and gives you straighter lines. The Osmo Pocket, on the other hand, only has one lens and it's equivalent to about the 24 millimeter focal length. Now, whether 24 millimeters is a good focal length for vlogging or not is completely up to debate. There are some vloggers that prefer the 24 millimeter effect because again, you don't have that fisheye effect. 
your vlogs then look more cinematic, they look more realistic, your lines are straight. And so there's an argument for shooting vlogs in the 24 millimeter focal length. But the thing with shooting at 24 millimeters is that unlike the GoPro, which you can hold just about anywhere and you know that you're gonna get yourself in the frame, with Osmo Pocket, you really have to hold your arm out fairly far just to, just to get yourself in the frame. If you're trying to shoot yourself plus a partner or like a group of people, 24 millimeters is not the best focal length to be using. So this bird nest is actually a good uh, showcase that you don't have this low wide angle with the Osmo. So when you're in this nest, you barely see any of it. And I think the GoPro will show you more of it. Yeah, the GoPro is, is significantly wider. Yeah. So you'd have to really have your arm out there or you'd have to put this you know, attach it to a tripod, which again, you need an adapter just to do that too, by the way. Whether 24 millimeter focal length is a plus or a minus for you and for vlogging is up to debate. Now the Galaxy S8 does have probably the widest range of focal lengths of these three cameras. The built-in lens of the Galaxy S8 is already pretty wide and you realistically could use that to make vlogs and to record yourself. But if you wanted to change your focal length and maintain image quality, then I really, really, really recommend using the Moment lenses. So this again is the super fish wide angle lens and it actually gives you that fisheye effect. Even with the phone, you can have this out pretty far and you know that you're gonna get yourself in the frame. And right now I'm actually using the phone as, a, as an external monitor so I can see myself as I'm vlogging, which is another great use of the phone. Another thing we should talk about are the adapters for all these cameras. So for adapters and accessories, the GoPro probably has the most out there. Because GoPro has been around for so long and the size of the GoPro really hasn't changed much and neither has the mount, there are tons of products out there that support mounting a GoPro. These guys will hold your camera in place. So this right here is the phone mount with a little GoPro adapter and I can take that same mount now and I can now use my phone on anything with a GoPro adapter. I can have this attached to a window and I can hold my phone in place to do like a hyperlapse or a time lapse. Um, I, the possibilities are endless. So GoPro mounts are extremely valuable, extremely flexible, and I think they're still one of the main reasons why people tend to like GoPros. Now the one that's probably behind the most in terms of accessories and adapters is the DJI Osmo Pocket. Because this is a brand new camera, there's nothing out in the market like it. The company themselves have not released their adapters yet. And so this is a camera that is fantastic right now, but I think it will get even better as there are more adapters that come out to enhance the functionality of it. Another downside to the Osmo Pocket is the fact that it's not really weather sealed and you have things like your micro SD slot it is exposed right here and there's not even a cover for it and same with your USB-C port. So this is a device that you don't want to risk it with the rain or any, any bad weather. Unlike the phone which has a degree of weather sealing, it's getting progressively better. And obviously the king of weatherproofing and weather sealing is the GoPro. The newest line of GoPros is completely weather sealed, weatherproofed, straight out of the box. You don't have to put it in that plastic cage anymore. And so this just has a lot more flexibility. So of these three cameras, which one is the very best for modern day vlogging? Well, that of course is gonna depend on a variety of things such as your budget. These two cameras are fairly close in price, but the phone is obviously the most expensive. But again, the phone is the one that you're gonna have regardless. You may not have one of these cameras, but you're always gonna have a smartphone. And every smartphone today has a built-in camera and they're pretty darn good. Uh, one way to enhance your, your smartphone is to use the Moment lenses. So I'd highly recommend looking at lenses if you want to stick with a smartphone. If you have the extra budget to get a dedicated vlogging camera, I would seriously look at one of these two options. Uh, the Osmo Pocket is brand new, just came out. With that comes some restrictions in that this is the first generation. Usually takes a generation or two for new cameras to really find their stride so that all the adapters and accessories are out, so that all the bugs are fixed. So right now the Osmo Pocket is a great camera, but I think it's one that will get better with time. 
And finally, we have the classic GoPro. And GoPro has never been thought of as a vlogging camera. It's, it's been thought of as an action camera, and it still is a really great action camera. But because of the improvements in sound quality and the fact that it now shoots in hyper smooth and has 4K 60p, this is a viable contender as a vlogging camera. So for me personally, my, my choice is either my Samsung Galaxy S8 phone with a moment lens attached to it, or the GoPro Hero 7 Black. Uh, Osmo Pocket is a favorite of Martin's, but at the end of the day, we still use some combination of all three of these cameras when we're vlogging. So now I'd like to turn it over to you. Are you interested in vlogging? And if so, are you using any of these three cameras here? Or are you opting for a DSLR mirrorless camera setup? Or a point and shoot setup? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.